talking of okay. upstate. I know. You took that journey on the underground, darling. <laughs> Oh my, yeah. from all the way from Rada. Yep. And everybody there is so proud of you. They keep going, Cindy Arriba <laughs> was in Rada. So they claim you. We'll talk about well, for now. We'll talk about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. But um and I saw you the first time I saw you in person was was your Sealy on Broadway. We yeah. can go back to that. Yeah. But then you just kept going. You kept, yeah. you know, through the desert, through the through the inner city. Yeah. And then you hit that railroad. Yeah. Yeah. What was it like? What was it like finding Harriet, finding the person Harriet? Yeah, that, that, was, that was the thing that I truly enjoyed, uh, finding her as her humanity, the womanhood. That was the thing I, I desperately wanted to, to do with her because I know that we have pictures and we see the hero, we know the work that she's done, but we just, we just don't know about the person. And, and I don't believe that that come all this work, all this incredible uh, determination and like fire comes from someone who doesn't have like life. So in the research, in the working out, because I was putting myself through it, I put myself through it because I wanted to make sure that I could be connected physically to her as well. Um, I I found a person. I found this woman who had wants and needs and love and loved and was loved. Uh, a woman who is desperately in love with her family, desperately in love with her husband, would do anything for them. And in that found a love of uh, the people, uh, a love of wanting uh, freedom for all, you know? And I think it was probably the most overwhelming journey, just because you, you don't realize how much a person has gone through until you start trying to retrace their steps. Um, that, was, that was something, you know? Um, Getting there. What did, what did finding a way to look out of her eyes, yeah. what did that leave Cynthia with? Contemporary yeah. young Cynthia, what, yeah. did, what did that leave you with? From her. Yeah. From her, I guess there's like, I thought I was, uh, I thought I was determined. In <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what, I'm laughing because when I think of you, I would say, I was kind of chuckling to myself when you said fire, determination. I went, yeah, yeah, <laughs> since you Rebo. But go ahead. Yeah, no, I, you know, you think, and I, and I have a determination. I have a, a strength in me, but the, it's just not hers. It's not like her. And so being able to do that, I don't know, there's a, it's like someone supercharged it, Yeah. you know? It's like someone supercharged what I, what I had, what I thought I had. And so now I'm like ready for anything. I, the, if I feel, I know it's like someone, she left a little something like cayenne pepper, no. if that, you know what I mean? It's, it feels like there's a, there's a real uh, fire lit inside. Um, Do and you I, find yourself stepping up to be of assistance in public. Yeah, like yeah. Now, like yeah, just ready. Protecting, protecting, protecting other people. people. For, you're ready to, to I, I'm not afraid of the things that I, that I used to be. I'm not afraid of speaking out. I'm not afraid of having tough conversations with people. I'm not afraid of, of standing up for something I truly believe in. I, it, you know, I, I, think of, I probably think of consequence last now because I know that as long as it, it's leading to good, I'm, I'm fine, I'm happy to do it. Can you read a sign or a map? Can you read it all? I put my attention on trying to hear God's voice more clearly. Do you know what would happen if you got caught? They would torture you until you pointed them right to this office. You got lucky, Harriet. And there's nothing more you can do. Don't you tell me what I can't do. How good are you in standing up for yourself? Now I'm very good. <laughs> now I'm very good. Um, it took some time. <laughs> well, you're, you're there. way ahead of the game to be as young yeah. as you are and already yeah. have that sensibility. Well, you know what? It's because it's I've, I've bumped into so many really young actresses, like just starting out 17-year-olds, 18-year-olds who really want to do it. And, they, and I know that for me, they're, they're watching me as an example. And, and that, that's not just for me, like wanting them to watch me. From, it's because they tell me. You're an inspiration and I want to do this. And, and I just know that it's part of the work to stand up for myself because in turn, it, it ends up 
being for the good of the 17 year old or the 18 year old who looks at me and goes, I want to do that so that if I have stood up for myself, they don't really have to. And they'll learn to stand up for themselves for other reasons. But there's things that I can put in place and they can work on before they get there. You know, that's how I see it. Um, and I, I, re I relish that. I love the idea of being able to be an example. I mean, who knew? <laughs> You know, well, what do you mean? <laughs> Too new. It, yeah, you're you're an obvious person that people would would imagine a path looking mm. at you. Didn't matter whether your path was already laid out. Yeah. I mean, it's like I always say, Picasso didn't become Picasso when he was 21. He was right. he was Picasso when he was five. Right. And right. you know, his you know, if he had like a, a, a an insensitive uh, art teacher, a mom yeah. saying like, Pablo, put the eyes on the front of the face. That woman's <laughs> ugly. You know, we wouldn't have him. Yeah. But you know who the artist is yeah. very early on. Yeah. Um, and so people already know where you're going, even when you just, you know, plats flying, who color child, <laughs> they know when yeah. you're passing through there. Yeah. And I think sometimes it, it upsets the adults around them because right. if they don't if they don't have an artistic impulse, mm -hmm. they don't know what's wrong with you. They right. don't know that your mind it's is already right, going yeah. and that it's no offense if you're not looking at them right. while they're talking. But I have a feeling that, you know, from from very young going on, mm -hmm. people around you, especially young, your your people around you, what are your colleagues, your Peers other kids? Yeah. They they knew. Yeah. They knew. Maybe. Yeah. What about you? Like, how did you... It's just... It's such a glorious thing to watch you. I Like, I've learned from you. So how... When did you know that this was... You were made for this? Because you are. Like, you're made to, to tell stories. It's, like, in your blood. I didn't even... I was not interested. It wasn't like I was shy or anything. Yeah. I was not interested at all until I was 15. I was an Did athlete. It, was it like a, a switch, just a switch turned on one day? Well, I kind of got, I got uh, sort of, uh, what do you, um, I got, uh, no, what do you, you know, Pushed. it's kind of course, <laughs> you know, recruited. <laughs> <laughs> I got recruited yeah. into a play because the nun that was teaching me American history knew that mm. I, I, I could memorize things well because she would mark up my papers. I figure I could remember passages. I'm good at remembering passages of things. Yeah. I learned my lines in hair and makeup. I completely know my character. I yeah. find that I turn them into a human being. Yeah. I know beat by beat what I want, mm -hmm. everything. I know the story, but I don't commit the lines at all right. till the day before of. the scene, hair and makeup. Because right. I feel like nobody knows what they're going to say in right. life anyway. Right. So, so you get to think it up. And if you, if you don't know it, then you go, line? <laughs> or, or they say, Cut, yeah. you can do it over. Yeah. So she you know, she'd mark my paper. Yeah. I know what Mr. Hawthorne thought. I read the book. I asked what you thought. So I was like, you think, let me put down what's in that book. She's not going to mark it wrong. But so, uh, so I got yeah. somebody, she needed somebody to learn a play fast. Yeah. And I was, so I was it. But for me, it was like, you know, I was, I was an odd child. Yeah. Uh, and you can either be odd and apologetic about it, uh -oh, or you can really be loud. odd and just like, I'm not going away. <laughs> <laughs> odd and loud. <laughs> <laughs> so it felt like I was walking around, yeah. you know, all my life yeah. on dry land doing the, the breaststroke. And then people are like, oh, yeah, what are there? She goes. But it was as if. First, I said to her, sister, I couldn't possibly pretend, stand up in front of people pretending I'm somebody else. Right. I was a student leader, all of that. But mm -hmm. it was the pretending to be somebody else, which is the it? only reason to tell a story um, that I discovered, mm -hmm. you know, as I grew. But I felt like somebody had just tipped me into the water. Mm -hmm. And that very and that thing, made sense. that stroke, it was like, whoosh, it took you there. Yeah. And you had this freedom. And I had oxygen for the first time in my mm -hmm. life. And it's like, OK, I, I want to live in the middle of that. Mm -hmm. So besides 
in bed with my children. They're too big now. Because <laughs> <laughs> the kids are never too big. in bed with my children or mm-hmm. on a boat mm-hmm. with my children and my husband. Mm-hmm. My favorite place to be in the world is between action and cut. Yeah. That's where I feel the most at home. Yeah. So, so uh, I'm probably off the subject, but that's, that's how I got into it. Yeah. How do you keep doing it? I do my job. You want to believe there's good guys and bad guys. And I'm one of the bad guys. But I give these men respect, Marty. You know how people are like, oh, yeah, Jenny's been singing since she was three. You know who I know? <laughs> Beanie Felstein. I've known that, Beanie she since Beanie was great. four. Four oh years old, she Oh, my goodness. I want to. <laughs> she like, she's, I just, she's always been yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. So there's all those people like that, that, yeah. that they know it early. They, they you know, they yeah. they point that way. But I, I just, it, like, again, I wasn't shy. I just was not interested. Yeah. Yeah, I'd yeah. rather play, play ball. That's kind of cool. Wow. I love that. It's like, for, I, I guess for me, I'm like the combination of Beanie and you. So ah. I, knew I, wa- I knew I could sing when I was about five. So I knew I wanted to keep doing that because people... I bet your mama knew you could sing. She knew I could sing before I, I was five. No, she knew I could sing. before you could talk. And exactly. She has a baby book. I think that baby, baby she might in. be wet. <laughs> she knew. She totally. said I used to hum when I was eating. So she knew when I was like 18 months. She knew. She wrote it down in her baby book that she thought I was going to be a singer. We come here knowing already with that purpose yeah. for what we come to do. Yeah. And the more adults stay out of your way, a child will dis- will will find it. It'll, it'll become apparent what they came yeah. for. That's so crazy. Because my that's the th- so everyone will ask, well, does, does was your mom like a was she pushy? Was she a, no? She just was like, okay. And you know what? If your baby had, you know, the voice of God coming out of him, <laughs> it was like, you, you know, you need to be in jail if you didn't say, come yeah. on, honey, we, let's, let's go into the town square with this. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is. She would like tap me on the show. What are you, are you singing? You singing today? You going? And then she would always like just remind me of what it was I'm, what it was I was supposed to do. Never pushy. But always just a reminder, like just a quick. I, I had the real weird phase when I was about 16 or something where I just stopped doing it for a second. I, I got shy. I, it was weird. I got shy and I was at a school because I was, I'm also like, a, I like to learn and I was really good at learning. And um, I, everyone around me in my class was, they wanted to be doctors. They want to be lawyers. They want to be nurses. They want all of that stuff. And I, I didn't want that. I wanted to sing and act, but then I felt weird because nobody else in my class would do it. I was in a class full of people who were brain boxes and I happened to be able to keep up with all those brain boxes. Oh. And so I felt weird. So I just was like, okay, I'll be a spinal surgeon. That's what I'll be. <laughs> yeah. I just decided I'd do, I'd do that. I'd go and I realized I had a penchant for like biology and I loved it and I was good at it. So I was going to keep doing that. And then my mum noticed that I hadn't, sung for a while. Like I wasn't singing. I was like, in passing in the sitting room. I think I was headed to the kitchen. She must have been doing something on the, in the, on the dining room table. She just goes, are you, oh, are you, are you singing somewhere? Are you going to, is there a concert or something you can come and listen to? Just make sure you're singing. Didn't say anything other than that. And it hit I'd me in like the back of my head like, like yeah. whew, okay. I guess I can't not do that then. You know? Question to ask you. Mm-hmm. Once once the public, mm-hmm. you know, at drama school, mm-hmm. at after starting a career, mm-hmm. do you feel people how do you feel about people wanting you to sing? Do you feel that they want you? Do they want to see you? They want to mm-hmm hear what you have to say, or do they mm. want you, are they, do you feel them moving around just so they can have your voice? This, oh, strange. Um, so I, I, this is a good example, actually. I had to make it clear after The Color Purple that it wasn't a switch that I could just turn on. 
that every time I sing something, it's connected to something. And so, especially when I'm singing songs that come from that particular show, I had been asked to sing something, I think it was like a Makers Conference, I think I was asked to do that. A what? It was called Makers Conference, Makers Women. And it's basically a conference where women of all professions come together oh. and you, we talk and we, you know, loads of different panels happen. And they had asked me to sing at this conference and I, I choose the songs based on how I feel, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and I had, I had made a promise to myself that I wasn't going to sing I'm Here, which is from The Colour Purple, unless it was meant to be sung or part of the show, because it, it took too much to get to the point I could sing it, and it took a lot out of me to sing it. So I had said, I'm not singing it at this, and they had agreed. And then when I got there, they had changed their mind and they wanted me to sing it. And I was just, you know when you're... Like your heart is like, no, I don't want to sing this today. This is not what I want to do. And so I, they pushed and pushed, so I, I agreed. And I said to them, I had, before I did it, I decided that I would speak before mm -hmm. I do it. Because sometimes people forget that there's a person behind mm -hmm. the voice and they have thoughts and feelings and views and all of that and they want you to sing, just sing. And so this time I decided to remind them that I was a human that I had feelings and thoughts and feelings and, and I didn't just sing out of nowhere. So I stood there and I, I said to them, I, I want you to understand that I didn't want to sing this today. What, you said it on I stage? I said it on stage. I said no. it on stage. I said, I didn't want to sing this today, but, I, I, but I'm going to, but I need you to understand that it doesn't come from thin air, that in order to sing this song, it takes a lot and that I choose the songs because of how I feel and what I feel inside and what I can give that day. But I'm choose I will sing this for you today, but know that the person behind the song is alive and has feelings and has a heart and, has, and sometimes is exhausted. And, and after three to 400 times of hearing someone call you ugly on stage before you get there, it hurts. And then I sang the song. So sometimes I do feel like people just want me to sing, but I always try and make sure that they remember that it comes from a person and not just a radio that you switch on. When trouble comes. You'll be ready. Try. Yeah. I do actually want to know, how, how did you, how did you come to to clemency and to, to that role? Did it what what pulled you in about it? Okay, so I have been a social activist since I was fourteen, mm -hmm. um, and I, I it's, it was, it's, so it preceded me being it, discovering I was an yeah. artist, um, and so my sense of being an artist mm -hmm. is completely rooted in my activism and my spirituality. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that I, I don't go out and do, you know, political plays mm -hmm. on the corner, but I will do street theater if it's good and yeah. I have done it. <laughs> but um, I like, uh, I, I believe that when we tell stories, it is for the healing yes. of the tribe. The yes. tribe is a global tribe mm -hmm. and we're, we're starting to recognize that more and more. Mm -hmm. So. I like just fall down crazy, funny stuff like beauty shop and mm -hmm. all a lot of different things. We can yeah. go through the, the resume. Uh, but there are those times that something that you do touches, touches a, a situation in the world mm -hmm. that, that having people know about it, hearing a story, yeah. You know, hopefully it changes some of the lives that are in the balance. Yeah. And and then the death penalty, yeah. you know, state sponsored uh, executions yeah. are something that have always every time they happen, it takes something. It takes something out of me mm -hmm. personally. And I weep even when I was young and I heard about it. Mm -hmm. And so, the, you know, I, I was already at doing that kind of work uh, along with um, Snoop and Jamie Foxx, oh, wow. uh, I was one of the people that was speaking out for Stanley, yeah. um, Stanley Williams mm -hmm. not to be executed, and mm -hmm. he should not have been, and no. we could go into that. Um, but 
they came to me, Bronwyn Cornelius, and she told me about this piece and mm -hmm. about this filmmaker, this young filmmaker, Chinoya mm -hmm. Chukwu. Yeah, yeah. And she started to talk about it. So I always make sure that whatever I'm doing, if it has a historical or political uh, theme or bent, that it's not just on the nose. Right. Because, you know, you have to trust your audience will, yeah, that will decide. Understand. Yeah. You present the reality and trust them. And so she said, it, uh, Chinoya said, it is, it is from the point of view of the people that we charge to, to actually carry it out. Right. People say, I'm pro, I'm con. Uh, death penalty, and right now we're just at the at the point where we're there's more people who in America who do Don't not want, want that to happen, yeah. with their tax money as yeah. well. And but there are laws in the states, and those states keep you know taking lives. Right. And it is especially a questionable situation when there are people who are found through DNA evidence afterwards right. that they were innocent. Right. But nobody knows what it was like. We haven't done those stories or right. talked out loud about the fact that the people that that we charge to carry out these right. executions, they have a higher PTSD rate or as right. high a rate right, right, as right. people with multiple deployments in, yeah. on battlefields. And so that was important to look at. That's yeah. why I was drawn to it, because, you know, I wanted... And you must always trust, you know, some actors don't want to be the villainous character. They, they all want to, want to seem heroic, and that's great. We, want, we need heroic stories. But if you're in a story that needs to be told, somebody's got to be the antagonist. Right. And I think it's important to be the antagonist because the antagonist is always a human being as well. Yeah. So that is your task, yeah. is to find that human being yeah. and stand them up and trust, you know, that, again, that your audience will draw whatever conclusion that right. you don't have to lead them to it. So that, that was how I came to it. Yeah. Just the fact that it was something that, that I was aware of. I'm an educated woman, I'm mm -hmm. over 60, and I had no oh, idea, great. and I'm politically active, yeah. and I had no idea, so that, that's how I came to it. You can't save the world. Yeah. That's a problem. Well, I just loved that there's such uh, humanity in her, you know, because I, I also have like a, a deep want to also play the antagonist in something um, because I believe that we forget that they are human beings who have who have a sense of morality as well. And they they don't know that they are the antagonist. Yeah, nobody wakes up. Nobody, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be an asshole today. <laughs> maybe apart from one person in the world, but, you know. <laughs> but... But nobody does that. And yeah. so to, to see it in that way, to see, you know, she has a life. She's dealing with other stuff. She's going through every day just figuring it out, figuring out what to do, what is best, what yes. she sees as what is best. And the other thing is when we, when we, don't, when we don't deliver uh, villains or antagonists, if we don't deliver them as human beings, the viewer can yeah. sit back and feel separated and right. superior. Right. But anything any human being is capable of, oh, high good. or high low, low, every other human being is capable of. And that's the story to tell, yeah. that you can't sep your, separate yourself from the actions of another person. Correct. Yeah. You know, you have, you have to deal with that in yourself right. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. It's like putting up a mirror uh, against someone and saying, look, this is this can be in you too. Yeah. And how do you deal with that? I what mean, that is? same the same nun, Sister Rachel Ann Graham, yeah. she got me into to actually acting. I, the whole long story about how Brother Patrick O'Brien uh -huh. first got me into the love of cinema. But and I knew I wanted to, like, join this circus. And, but um I remember it was uh, my first play. It was Peter Weiss's investigation. Mm. And nobody, so she was holding, like, everybody had to, you, who you, improv yeah. And so we were all divided between the Nazis and, and all the defendants. Mm -hmm. And nobody wanted to be the Nazis. We <laughs> 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 were like, you know, 15, 16, I'm going to be the Nazi. Yeah. And she said, you know, back then they wore habits. And she was, like, doing her rose when she said... <laughs> Oh, don't think you can't be a Nazi. Nazis are not born. I see your little fascist ways out on the out in the courtyard here. Oh <laughs> don't tell me you can't be a Nazi. And Lord knows we are learning 
Yeah. Just every day in yeah. every country we live in, that, there are... that fascism creeps. Yeah. Sometimes it Doesn't just look... stomps in yeah. with, you know. Doesn't necessarily have to wear the uniform. Yeah. It's just, yeah. yeah. That's what it is. Well, I think... Now it just bummed us out thinking about No, <laughs> I mean, I think it's just about the human condition, isn't it? It's about yeah. understanding that there is both good and bad in everyone. And it. And along the way, we make the choices that lead it's us choice. to one. Yeah. Yeah. You're constantly making choice. Yeah. That is, yeah, that's the thing is you always have a choice. And that makes me think also about acting. If that, and I say to young actors, whatever you want, mm -hmm. move in that direction. Mm -hmm. If you, you know... If you want to play Eleanor Roosevelt, mm -hmm. maybe don't take Bootylicious too. You know, because then you gotta <laughs> convince somebody later. And you know, but it's your choice. Yeah. If, whatever choice you make, when you don't have a pot to piss in, yeah. you when you get a pot of gold, you're you're not gonna trust making that choice. Right. Yeah. And then and then people are not gonna want to hear you that way. Right. Yeah. But every you know that's what's great. I do, I see a lot of dark things mm -hmm. and I, I do human rights work mm -hmm. and it, it's just a lot of, there's a lot of dark things in the world. Mm -hmm. But I think what makes us joyous and keeps us joyous yeah. is knowing that every moment yeah. is, a new, is, a, is a another new, opportunity. To, to do something you just good. Keep, you just keep making the choice. Make a, make a good decision. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Locally, I'm not talking about like, the big ones, but right just here, in the elevator. Ones, the ones that like take you one step forward every yeah. day. Yeah. Yeah. Did you look at everybody in the elevator and think? Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everyone. You yeah. Got, you know, what, what's like, yeah. happening with you? Small decisions but like that. that you have things. just the best smile ever. <laughs> you know, one of the things that I love about your work mm -hmm. is there is an openness mm -hmm. and Vulnerability does not mean that you can blow that person like a dandelion. Mm -hmm. To me, a vulnerability means that you're wide open mm -hmm. and you're ready to receive, to hear it, and then you can react however you want to. But there is, there is a, I, I would say there is a, an openness to, to the way that you work. Mm -hmm. Well, I, 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 try, I try to get out of the way. You know what I mean? I try to make space for, uh, to, to receive people, to receive whatever they need to give to me because if I can do that, then I can process what they have given to me so I can give them what they need back. Um, and I learned that at drama school. I learned, you know, for a small amount of time, it was, she's the strong woman, she's a strong black girl, she's mm. a giver, all of those roles. But, but for, for a while they didn't, coach my vulnerability until I met one teacher, Dee Cannon, who was like, oh no, I know, what, I know what you are. This is what you are. And we, she just, we did this workshop that allowed me to just crack right open. And it's the one thing that I, I feel is my, it's not even, do I call it a weapon? It might be like Your my go-to. My go-to. It's like the the sword and the stone. Well, finally, I could yeah. get it out when I find it when, when I when I could find that. Mm -hmm. And it's the thing that has allowed me to really like find people, find characters, find what they want. If each character has vulnerability, then I can um, I can open up what they need. I can find like the part of myself that might be afraid to come out, you know, in each of these women. And I think that's what it is. Yeah. And also, if you're open, someone else can be open too. If I show you me, then you can show me you. That's it, really. <laughs> we need you to run for office. <laughs> In the UK. <laughs> and then I'll, I'll run for, for, for office here. And we'll, like, we'll run the well. Come on, dear. Well, we already do. We just need to make it official. It's true. Yeah. This is true.